Now, the heading, like I said, is revision of graphing and calculus. We're going to cover a bunch of things that you already know of and have encountered, but um, perhaps we've not seen them all together. One of the things we do in maths often is we say, here's a particular skill, it's a particular skill, we're just going to make you really, really good at that one skill. So, when I learned to play the acoustic guitar, um, I first picked it up when I was your age, what I would do was, I'd just make the same chord, like just a single chord, over and over again with my hand. I'd like put the chord, my fingers on the strings, and I'd relax, and then I'd go straight back, because I was trying to develop muscle memory. Now of course there's not a single song in the world that's just one chord, right? Like four chord songs, okay, not one chord songs. But in order to develop that strength, I had to focus on that over and over again. But music happens when you take a variety of skills, a variety of chords, and then you combine them, okay? So these are things that you've seen over a space of time, and we're going to put them into one piece together. Let's get started. You've got the function right up the top. This one you should write down, because we're going to be using it, working with it, all the way through. We've got f of x with an x squared outside the front of x minus 1. So what family of functions does this f of x, what family of functions does it belong to? What would you call it? It's a, very good, it's a cubic. You don't see x cubed written anywhere yet, but we can on the next line, if you like, show by expanding this that it's a cubic. What's the expansion? It's a really easy one, so I started you off with it. x three. to the power of 3, x cubed, take away, minus just x, very good. So when you expand it out, it makes it a little more obvious that it's a cubic, but I handed it to you in this factorized form to sort of nudge you along and help you with some of these other pieces. So let's begin right at the top. We're going to graph this guy, okay? So part A, we're going to graph. Now, we'll need a set of axes here. Please get out a ruler. If you don't have one, number one, fix that, because we're not going to be here to lend you a ruler when you're in your APs. Number two, if you don't have one right now, shoot your hand up because you'll need it, okay? Let's get a set of axes on here. Now, as will often happen in an assessment task, I've tried to nudge you in the right direction by giving in the question itself a bit of guidance for what we want to see on this graph. So you can see it says graph y equals a function of x. That's slightly wonky. I'm going to fix that axis. Graph that, but don't just graph it. Don't just draw me a line. I want to show what? I want to show, so say that again. Yeah, after I show y equals that, right? what am I searching for? What features have been named in the question? I'm going to find my y and my x intercepts. So once I look back and draw a much straighter line, it's somewhat better. Okay. How do I find, for example, an x intercept? There's going to be more than one. How do I find an x intercept? Max, go ahead. Make y equals zero. So I've got here f of x and y, they're the same thing right there in part a, right? So to make y equal 0, to find those x-intercepts, I'm going to say x cubed minus x equals 0. Or I could have gone back to the original form of the line, which I actually think is easier. There's going to be two values of x, sorry it's a really messy x, two values of x that we can put in that will satisfy this equation and make the left hand side collapse to 0. Anyone else suggest those two values to me? What you can, put, can you put in here to make it zero? Oh, put in x equals zero, right? If you put in x equals zero, it doesn't matter that this won't be zero. Zero times a thing zero. will equal zero. So that's good. I'm just going to jot that down for myself, x equals zero. But that's the, not the only value that works. Have a look at this guy. What, you want to put in x equals one. This will not be zero, but it doesn't matter because this will be something times zero also equals zero. So x equals zero, x equals one. These will be my x-intercepts. You've got yourself a Cartesian plane there. So let's chuck these values on. There's x equals zero. There's x equals one. Let's label them. Okay. Now, it just so happens in this case, because I've given you a very simple function, that you found the x-intercepts, but you also found the y-intercept. Where is it? Yeah, it's on the origin, yeah? So I've done my x-intercepts, done my y-intercepts. You're welcome, I gave you a nice easy one. Is that enough information? To, to draw the graph. It feels like I could draw a lot of graphs through that, so what else could I do? Yeah. Okay, I want to look for a vertex, but it's a bit trickier with a graph like this because parabolas, which you get from a quadratic, they've got one vert vertex, but um, cubics don't just have one vertex, they actually have, often, they'll have multiple vertices or, or none. So 
what can I do to help me with this graph? Let's think for a second first about what's happening to the left and then what's happening to the right. Actually, the right's easier, right? If you put in very large values of x, like x equals 10, 100, 1,000, then what's happening to this thing? It's getting huge, right? Like if I put 100 in here, um, it'll be 100 squared, uh, 10,000 times 99, big numbers, right? It's going, whew, it's like skyrocketing up here. So eventually I'm going to have an arrow going up this way, okay? What about over here? If I put in a large negative value, like negative 100, what's going to happen? Well, in the first instance, this guy is still 10,000 because you, you squared it, right? The negative's gone, okay? But then what about this? If I put in negative 100 in here, negative 101. this becomes negative 101. So negative 101, 10,000, whatever. It's, in other words, it's a big negative number. Are you with me? So I'm going to have a line going down this way, arrow. Line going up this way, arrow. And then I just kind of need to work out what's happening in the middle. So okay? So I know it's going to cross the origin. It's going to go through here. Now at this point, I would suggest for the tools that we've got access to, I want to think about putting in some values and being able to work out what's going on. Say it again. Would it go through or bounce? Good question. Is it going to oops, go straight through here? Or is it going to kind of like curve away and then come back? What do you reckon? Will, what are you thinking? I was just thinking like, wouldn't you sub in like say a number between 0 and 1 and see if it's positive or negative and see if it's... We could take a number between 0 and 1, because I don't know what's happening in there, and I can substitute in to see what should be happening. And a half looks like the most obvious one. Okay? Maybe for this case, you want to just grab your calculator there so you can do this really easily. Right? You don't need to sweat your brain too much on all of this. I have been doing um, x equals 100, x equals negative 100. When you put x equals a half in here, what's happening? x equals a half. Someone got a value for me? Negative... Negative 1.8. So in other words, it's just beneath, just down here. Okay, so it's not above, it's down here. Okay, so what that means is if I'm coming from down here and I've got a land, so I'm just going to put an arrow down here just so we know, and you've got an arrow up here. That's what we worked out with our big values. And then, Will, you've just told me I'm going to have to go down there. Is this more helpful? This is way more information than I had before, right? I just had two spots. Now I've got like one, two, three, four, five spots that I know I'm going to go through. Can I give you a second? Put this information, if you haven't already, on your Cartesian plane. And then I want you to try and trace out. We use a pencil because we may get it slightly wrong. It's fine. Trace out where you feel like this graph is going to go. If you get it wrong the first time, that's okay. You've got a pencil. Use rubber. And see if you can put a shape through that. Okay. Have a go. Yeah. So we tested out those large values. Remember I asked about x equals 100 yeah. and x equals negative 100? Could have tried 1,000 or negative 1,000. All I get is it's big and it's positive. Or it's big and it's negative. Okay, so that's how I, I just tried some values. Just tried some values. Okay, um, if you've drawn something, can you just hold it up for me? I just want to see. And I'm lazy so I don't walk around all the way. Uh, okay. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Now, some of these are better than others. I'm going to draw you the graph that I've got. Okay. Now, some of them are very, very close, but here's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, I want you to look real closely at what's happening around here in the axis, right? You can see these wiggles are very important, right? How did I know that this is exactly the way it sort of undulated around? Some of you have something exactly like this. Some of you have something close, but where the wiggle happens is slightly different, okay? I'm going to come to that. We're going to go further into the question and see what we can do with this, okay? 